the intro music. Yeah! Woohoo! Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be talking about PvP battles, raiding metas, and what to do, what to prepare for with Incursions now launching. Now, the 8-pack servers are running already Incursion events, and as expected, there are a little bit of some hiccups. <laughs> Who was shocked? Who was shocked? Not me, but that doesn't mean it's been all bad. And there's actually been a, a, okay. So the problems have not been related to lag, oddly enough. But hopefully over the next couple of days, these get worked out. And by the end of the month, a lot of the issues are worked out. I guess it's good that lag has not been as bad of a problem as originally feared slash predicted. It doesn't mean it hasn't happened. It's just not as bad. So that's actually a, a thumbs up win. But anyway, what I want to do in today's video is, and hopefully y'all like it, is. Go over PvP crews, and I'm going to do what I generally hate doing, y'all. I'm going to focus on the generic. So every time somebody asks me, what's a generic auger crew? What's just a, a run-of-the-mill Burrell crew? Saladins. I'm going to go over that today. Now, I am currently got, to, or I have loaded out all of my docks for a specific purpose. Five PvP docks, one raid dock. I could possibly switch these out for more, but you'll see why here in a second. So I'm gonna go ahead and recall my ships. They look pretty here. I just wanted them set up to look good. That's literally my whole purpose was I wanted this. I just wanted this very pretty, we exit and warp home. And yeah, for whatever reason, I just, sometimes I like the graphics in this game. It happens, it's weird. So let's start with the Amalgam. Now the Amalgam, I have wanted about tier five with one upgrade. So I got tier five plus the cargo bay. Now I'm loading out for maximum, maximum, maximum pulls. Now you can still use your Antares, Valkyries, Cavort, whatever. But since this is a, a at least Incursions is designed for level 25 plus, most players in Incursions are going to have an Amalgam because you get a level 31. So even if you're still working on that, uh, for the free to play players who have been working on that process, you've actually probably unlocked it by now. So that's great. We're, we're happy. We like, we like stuff and we like rating. So that's going to be my primary raid ship now does that mean i will not swap to an antares i probably will if i get a good juicy raid and i want to hit you know multiple ships at one time but i have Bator here Bator is there for this officer ability on the amalgam increases the amalgam's bonus loot ability by an x percent depending on the level or the tier of Bator. and then i've got both stons i've got regular stun increasing cargo size and then i've got borg stun increasing cargo size these all work together, so I have a natural cargo of about 5 million, and then uh, depending on the raid, I can be pulling anywhere from 10 to 50 million based on the Amalgam's ability as well as the officer that I've thrown on there. So all things to consider and probably should upgrade the level there, but I've been trying to save those for events, so I'll just lose a little bit in that ability. Now let's take a look at my PvP ships and, and explain why I've loaded them out the way that I have. Once again, I am trying to go with a little bit of generic here. so. I've got this one designed for base cracking. Now, if you do not have ROM, many of you are gonna say, well, what do I use for base cracking? The con crew. So con is captain with full synergy on, it, on each side. That's gonna be what you generally have, level 28 plus. If you never unlocked ROM, you're going to wanna use that as your primary crew. It's okay if you don't use that. You can use a regular PVP crew. We talk about PVP in my Discord all the time. So if you need further tips, well, Hop on in there for them, I guess, and we can do it. Or you can just, you know, cloak and disappear. I know that's not the cloak sound. That's just what I wanted to use. That's just what I wanted to use. So you could cloak and just avoid it. If you want to, focus on PvP and avoid base rating and just relocate your base. But this is what I'm actually looking forward to the most. Now, I also purposely put under decks more officers than I needed. So why did I do that? So my thought was, well, what if I wanted to swap this out for a better ship? You know, what if I wanted to go for a critical build? So here's something really easy. See, I've got Honor Guard Wharf. So what I did is I have Gorkon underneath and five. Bam. Swap those out. I've now got a critical build with mitigation in the middle to defend myself. So I'm going for the Hull Breeze Chance with the critical. And I'm going for a critical. So I'm going for full damage build here. While also protecting myself with a little bit of a mitigation boost with five. Now, ultimately, I would swap out my Saladin if this is what I was going to do. So I would not use the Saladin in that slot if I had to swap it for PvP. I'm using the Saladin for base rating. Now, many of you are going to wonder, well, Rev, you have Valdors and Jellyfishes and Enterprises. Why the Saladin? Because with ROM, I can delay their combat for one round. And with the cost of ship repairs, this gives me an efficient but very powerful first round punch to take out a couple of items in a base. And now that there are no 10 minute shields, we can just spam our Saladin without having to repair. You know, my Valdor is 15 million to repair. 
every time around. And this is a lot cheaper, a couple hundred thousand. So I can just spam the repairs on this and blow through using that big gun of the salad. Remember the big kinetic weapon firing in round one, hitting on a critical with whole breach combined. This is gonna be dealing millions in damage. And even if you're a lower level player, this is an effective strategy. Moving on to my enterprise. Now this one is a mix of generic slash targeted. Now I've basically loaded out to fight other explorers and a lot of explorers in the game are running critical builds. Now, if you looked at our anti-PVP meta that we had talked about, our anti-critical meta, this is one of the primary crews. So TOS Kirk is going to give us morale. Synergy with TOS Ahura for Sorry Neither, which decreases the critical hit chance of an opponent by 110%. Huge for anybody running on a guard war for Khan. This negates that. And then I'm running Marcus on the side to give me a bonus in my piercing values to lower my opponent's mitigation. Now, you'll also notice that I've chosen to make this my primary PVP ship, meaning under decks, I balanced out. I did the math. Not only have I hit my 300%, I'm over 20,000 points for my Marcus. So I'm using that, my defensive points. And then I've also added in two lower deck abilities. You can see right here, Tindy and Mariner. Damage and a whole health boost. Both of those going on my primary ship, pushing my enterprise to well over 6 million, which is a pretty freaking strong enterprise. This comes down to balancing where you're at, for me, the officer balancing was pretty easy. Once I reached the target goal, I want to have at least 20,000 defense because I am spreading my officers amongst a lot of ships right now. This allowed me to hit my bonuses and then focus on throwing these in to get something else I want as a bonus, which is that big whole health boost, pushing me over 6 million. Next, I've got my Valdor with a generic crew. People are always asking, Rev, what's a generic PVP crew? This is a generic PVP crew. Lorca, Tilly, Khan, Lorca. Giving you hull breach as well as captain's ability manipulation. If there's a hull breach, decreases opponent's weapons damage by 150% with this synergy. Then I've got Killy there, giving me a boost to my mitigation every round. Now the tricky thing here is it's a cumulative growth, which is good, but this fight's probably not going to last very long. This would be better suited on a higher tier ship, let's say a, a tier seven intrepid or an auger. This would be better because you expect the fights to last longer against opponents of similar size to you. Because I am putting on a Valdor and I'm expecting to fight other four-star ships with it, I'm probably going to do that great. But I'll be honest, I'm going to use my Valdor as mostly a distraction ship. My Enterprise will be my primary PvP ship. Why, you might ask, because my Enterprise will easily defeat my Valdor. The Enterprise is my best PvP ship, so I've loaded out the Valdor almost as a distraction. Big Beefy looks scary, but the Enterprise is the creeping giant for me in my loadouts. Now, I do have some undercards set up in different ways to adjust how I'm running it. You can look over here. I've got Yuki here where I can swap out Yuki, have Yuki Marcus if I'm, say, fighting Valdors who aren't running critical builds. They're just running generic PvP crews. Give me a bonus versus the Romulans as well as Shield Strip with Synergy. So a few different things that you can run here with effect. Now, I've got those two. There's my Valdor. Moving on, generic Augur crew. People ask all the time, what crew would you run on an Augur? So I was like, okay, what can I put on there that most everybody will have? And here's an answer. Giorgio, Ash Tyler, which you get synergy here, and then DJ Oki. So I've got the never fire first at the start of each round. If the opponent is burning, Captain Giorgio decreases the attack of all officers on the opponent's ship by 125%. Now, while this isn't an amazing ability, it is useful and will notice, or you will notice a drop in your opponent's attack power. Now, I've also got Ash Tyler, which is when I'm burning, I'm getting a cumulative boost to my ship's ability in terms of attack. And finally, got DJ Oki, which is boosting my mitigation. One of the main things I always harp on everybody, the two best builds for PvP are mitigation-based builds and critical-based builds, and you can intermingle them. You can also do damage uh, builds and mix damage and critical with anti-faction officers. But many of you are wanting generic, so that's kind of what we were focusing on here. And then I've got my Burrell, one of the most generic PvP crews in the game, maxed morale. Now, if you do not have them maxed, it's okay you will run Kirk as captain. But if you do happen to have a tier five phones, you would run him as captain. Now, I made this video a long, long time ago. And if you remember it, if you if you have been a follower for a while, please comment if you remember this video. But there's a video talking about the ability of maxed morale. So max morale, you'll take the bones captain's ability, 42% to officer ability. And when combined or in conjunction with Spock's ability, 
you'll have over a 1,000% shield regeneration every single round. So that's going to help keep your shields up in like-minded PvP fights. You'll notice that this is a very popular crew from back in the day to even still now for things like Centurions, Saladins, even the Bordas, because it keeps the shields up and allows the fights to last longer. Remember, shields will stop 80% of any non-mitigated damage in any PvP fight. So keeping them up is very important. Obviously, your mitigation, you want to have a high mitigation. That's more important, but this still a very good crew, especially when you're getting further down the dock. And you'll notice, I did not go heavy stacking here, just enough to get the defense stats up, and I went for the 300%. Real quick note, for those who are curious, I get asked this all the time, unless you have an officer using a stat, like for example, Spock uses defense, there's no point to increase these stats right here. Once you reach 300%, if there's no officer using the attack stat, do not throw more officers in. Which is why right now, on this ship, I do not have more officers. What's the point? Now, I could throw on things like this and throw on Boimler and then even if I want to throw on Sam Rutherford to give me a little bit more shields and things like that. That's fine if you want to do that. But remember, you have those extra slots not being used. So you can use this to try to give yourself a little bit of an advantage. I'll also point out, and do not forget this, your Cerritos can be very, very valuable in the Incursion Wars. This little, fun, look, load it out exactly how I have this last slot loadout. This is a completely fine loadout for it. Load it out like this, but you're using it for its ability to boost your ships and make them better and make them stronger. Yes, you'll notice I'm not using my ISS Jelly for PvP. That's not my plan. But I did want to provide y'all with an, a, you know, a video going over a slew of officers and how they can be used effectively for you. Now, if you are a very low level player, say, hey, Rev, I haven't unlocked a lot of these things. That's fine. One thing you should have unlocked is the starter morale crew. So Spock, Kirk, Bones. Starter morale, everybody should have something like that. You should also, if you're at least level 28, have Gorkon, Kurla, Khan. Gorkon, Kurla, Khan. You can put that on a Saladin. It's a kinetic base critical build. Gives you huge shots. You might not win, but you'll do a lot of damage. If you're missing out on even those officers, at the end of the day, the not the worst thing, but you could do is use and build around officers like Cadet Kirk, boosting your officer stats, as well as giving you a small damage boost. The Cadets do have a little bit of value there, but we're talking really low level PVP, and you're not going to win very often. Mo mostly you want to track what is happening with the abilities. We talked about eight and nine, plus two attack of the officers, helping you get to that 300% mark, thus boosting your damage, boosting your whole health, Strategies like this will keep you alive and keep you fighting in the game. Now remember, I'm loading out for maximum PvP. I'm planning on going in and fighting multiple hostiles. The most efficient strategy is to load out your singular best ship for the task at hand, which is what I did with the Enterprise. The only thing I could do better with my Int is to actually build more into the stats for Marcus. That's the only thing I could really do better, but that would take away from some of my other crews. I'm going to try to just have fun and do everything. I've got two docks focused on raiding. That's Dock A right here with the Saladin, and then the Dock there at the very end, Dock E. I can swap out my Saladin for another PvP ship. So I can just take it here and be like, hey, let's bring out this D4, and let's swap some things around and make it into a small PvP boat. Boom, small PvP boat. So whatever you want to do, think about those as tactics and come together with it and have fun. And hopefully this video helps you do that. Remember, there are other things you can do. There's so many options for this. You look at your Vidar. Be mindful of the speed of certain ships. The 132 impulse speed of the Vidar makes it a great little hit hard, hit fast, and get out of their ship, even for lower level players. So if you got big, scary whales coming in from the opposing servers, destroy their miners with this. Whatever you want to do. Lots to do. Hopefully this video helped. If it did, please like it. This helps out the channel more than you can know. Subscribe if you haven't already. Share this out with your friends. And if you have questions about PvP, what to do, need specific help, as always, ask me directly. A lot of this depends on the tier of your ship, the research you have, the officers and levels of those officers that you've unlocked to make an effective crew. But hopefully this helped give you a basic idea for all the incursion wars that are here and are coming. Live long and prosper. Stay safe with the Space Cowboys. Deuces. That's me. Catch you the next one. We outy. An even better outro than the intro. For the empire and glory to your house.